Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So today, continuing talking about rational functions. Uh, this time we're looking at point uh, discontinuity, which is just a point where a function does not exist. Okay. So let's just let's just get into it. So yesterday we looked at functions. We looked at asymptotes. And we didn't really talk about it that much, but one of the keys finding asymptotes is you have to have factored out everything that you can first. So all the problems you saw yesterday were already as factored as they could be, and we didn't have to think about it. That's not the case today. So first thing we have to do is we got to think back to last week, and we need to factor out our top and bottom as best we can. So if I look at my first example, x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 1, I can't mess with the bottom at all. That's just x plus 1. But on top here, I can say this is going to be x plus 2 and then x plus 1. Okay. So then we see we have an x plus 1 in common. And then that becomes our key here. Because if you look at our definition, we say given a rational function, that's what all of this is, if there is a factor, then that's where our hole is. That's where our discontinuity. So here is our factor, x plus 1. Uh, I want to cross it out, but I kind of don't want to. So I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. So since x plus 1 is our factor, right? we want the opposite sign of that. It's basically, it's like what we said yesterday. We, we find our factors, and then we want the actual answer itself. So if our factor is x plus 1, then the answer we want is the opposite of that is negative one. Okay, so our function does not exist where x equals negative one. Okay, and then from there, all that's left of our function is just x plus two. So we could even graph this. We could say y equals x plus two. If we draw ourselves a a little grid here, so y-intercept of two, uh, positive one is our slope. And this will exist everywhere except at this point where x is negative 1. So there would be a, like an open circle, right? So our line goes on forever, right? Just like y equals x plus 2 would. And it's just this one single point where this function does not exist. And that's what we're looking for. So if you were to graph this on like Desmos, if you put in this whole thing, you would get this graph. I don't think it'll mark off this point, but if you were to make a table for it, right? So if you add a table, uh, you would see like if x is negative two, y is zero. When x is zero, y is two, one, three, two, and four. But this last point where x is negative one, it'll say, undefined, right? So that's our key here. So remember, anytime you're dealing with rational functions, anything that makes your denominator equal zero, your function cannot exist there, okay? And then, so why is this just a single point instead of an asymptote like yesterday? That's an excellent question. The reason why that's the case is because we were able to factor it out. Right? If we couldn't factor out x plus 1 and we were just left with x plus 1 in the denominator, then it would have been an asymptote instead of a single point. So that's the difference. Okay. All right, let's try one more. Let's get rid of this table. Let's skip the second one because you're not going to have to deal with anything like that. Uh, all right, so f of x, negative x squared minus 3x plus 4. So this time I see I don't have just one as my coefficient of x squared. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 for just a negative. So I can flip all my signs on the inside. So plus 3x minus 4. Okay. And this way I can factor it a little bit easier. So if I want to write this out, what multiplies to negative 4 and adds to negative 3? So that is, what is that? That's negative 4 and positive 1. And then I factor my bottom, so multiplies 4, adds to 5, so that's going to be x plus 4, x plus 1. Okay. So if we notice, we have an x plus 1 in common. So we can factor that one out if we needed to graph it. 
And then this becomes our point of discontinuity. So remember, it's the opposite sign. So since our factor is plus one, then our point is going to be at x equals negative one. Okay? So then what we're left with, our leftover function here, after we simplify it, is negative x minus four x plus four. So we could we could do the work from yesterday. Like we could say there's a an asymptote at x is negative four. If we if we solve their denominator, set that equal to zero. Uh, we see they have the same degree. So we also have an asymptote at y equals negative one. So there's actually a whole lot going on in this graph. If you graphed it, it would end up looking, I don't know, it's one of one of these deals. No, oh, that's not a very good picture. I should just put it in the calculator. So we'd have, we would have our point. Oh, I should make rid of I don't even know why I'm doing this. No one's paying attention at this point. This isn't even a straight line. So at negative one, so somewhere around here, our function doesn't exist, right? Uh, x equals negative four. Oh, this is a terrible graph. Put it on this one, so you'll see what I'm talking about. But this right here, this is the number we're looking for today. That is the single point where our, our graph will follow, right? But it will not actually touch that one specific spot. Okay, so try them out. Basically, what this is, is just practice factoring equations and then, and then simplifying. So you can also, if you're here, I'll give you a shortcut. Anytime you just see like x plus one, right? Like that's, that's gonna be your key point, All right? So since we started with x plus one, we ended up with x is negative one. If we did, uh, if we did number one here, you see x plus five in your denominator, All right? So that's gonna be our factor since our answer is not none. So it's gotta be the opposite of plus five, so it's just negative five, right? So anything where it's just a, uh, it's just a single x plus or minus something, that's going to be basically your answer, just the opposite sign. The only ones you really have to work out are anything with x squared in the denominator. So there you go, that's free answers for us sticking around to the end.